which I would invite uh, Dr. Vasumati Vedantam to give us an update on diabetic mind. She's a consultant, vitreoretinal surgeon, and one of the medical directors of Radhatri Netralia. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. After the multitude of talks on macular holes, I hope this update on DME comes as a breath of fresh air. And I thank the Shankar Netralia family for the kind invitation, and I'd like to acknowledge the support of Bayer. India and the Southeast Asia is expected to account for a whopping 74% increase in the diabetic population, and vision loss is the most feared complication for patients with diabetes. And amongst the reasons for visual loss, diabetic macular edema is the commonest cause of vision loss. And particularly in a middle-income country like India, we are looking at a huge diabetic blindness burden due to diabetic macular edema. And how do we combat this? By stronger agents and aggressive treatment. So the theoretical basis is there are two molecules which drive the development of retinal vascular diseases, vascular endothelial growth factor and placental growth factor, both of which act on VEGF receptor 1. And even with complete VEGF blockade, placental growth factor would still be available to bind to the VEGF R1. And interestingly, there are a lot of VEGF R1 receptors on the white blood cells associated with inflammation. And we all know that diabetic retinopathy itself is an inflammatory disorder. So effective treatment strategies should use agents that bind both VEGF and placental growth factor. And currently, aflibercept is the only agent which binds to both VEGF and placental growth factor. And it has the strongest binding affinity amongst all the agents available today. So what is the scientific evidence? VEGF A and placental growth factor are upregulated in exudative retinal diseases like DME, and aflibercept significantly decreases the intraocular levels of both. A short case from my practice, a 55-year-old male patient, we put him on ILEA for you program. So the pre-injection visual acuity was 612N8 and 69, uh, 612N8. And this is the cystoid macular edema, and this is the fundus photograph. And one month post the first injection, I don't know why the slides are mixed up. One month post the first injection of aflibercept, the visual acuity improved, and uh, the edema also reduced quite well. And these are the pre-second injection uh, pictures with a little bit of recurrence of edema. This is two months post, post the first injection. And one month post the second injection, the visual acuity improved quite well. And a little bit of CME was still persistent in the left eye. And he underwent the third injection after two and a half months. And every time after the aflibercept injection, the patient used to imp report an improvement in the brightness uh, uh, and the vis visual acuity. And you see um, a quite a good reduction of the macular edema post the third injection. And what is this early intensive or aggressive treatment? What is the scientific evidence? Vivid and Vista clearly says, showed us that after the first injection, patients gained one line of vision. And after five monthly loading doses, they gained another two lines of vision. And at week 52 primary endpoint, patients across both studies gained more than 10 letters on an average from baseline. And Vivid and Vista also showed us that patients, by delaying aflibercept treatment, your vision outcome tends to be poor. And protocol T, the seminal study, showed that early intensive treatment at the beginning led to maintenance of vision in year two with lesser number of injections. So what scientific evidence we have is that after early intensive treatment, you have better vision, out vision outcomes as shown by all the studies. A delay in treatment leads to worsening and lesser number of injections actually uh, in the future is possible when we institute early intensive treatment as shown by protocol T. So I will show you one case in my practice before I stop, which illustrates this point. This is a 67-year-old female patient, 35 years of diabetes and a very uh, poorly controlled. This was the story of her right eye. She presented in 2018, and this picture is taken six months after. I mean, she kept delaying the injection. She never took the injection. She was 6, 36, and 36. Finally, she consented after six months to undergo the injections. And you can see that every point of time, she came only for injections after three months. And the retinal picture and the vision continue to remain the same. And this was the final pic uh, day in which, I mean, the last injection. And after that, she didn't undergo any other injection. Vision remained the same. Retinal picture remain the same. And this was three years later, you see that the picture is still the same. She did not undergo any other injection. But if you see the same story, the same patient in the left eye, she presented with defective vision 10 months after she asked us to stop injecting in her right eye. She came with 612 and an 8. And this uh, time, she was convinced for monthly injections because she knew that this was her main eye. 
So this immediately after the first injection of aflibercept, her vision improved to 6, 9, and 6. After that, we kept injecting her, and after six monthly injections, this is her vision, 6, 6, and 6, and the beautifully restored foveal contour. And then after that, we did not have to inject her again. And this is her last follow-up. You can see that the vision is still maintaining at 6, 6, and 6. After those first six injections, she has not received any other injection. So the importance of a stronger agent, early intensive therapy, and sustained injections is necessary to maintain the vision in many of our patients. And international guidelines, in fact, have recommended the use of aflibercept in patients with visual acuity less than 612. So thank you very much for your patient hearing.